Hi there, this is Sharon Knight, and you are listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Uh, we've got a, another great interview for you guys today uh, with Sharon Knight. Sharon Knight is a very interesting and unusual uh, uh, musician, and I'm really excited to have Sharon here with us today. Before we get into that, though, I'd like to thank uh, our sponsor, Positively Pittsburgh Live Magazine. That is pplmag.com, Pittsburgh's first internet radio, TV network, and online community magazine and business directory. You can uh, watch and download and get emails uh, with audio and video created by the members of the community. You can read articles, get coupons, and find businesses. You can even have... Your own magazine page where you can publish your own articles and upload your own audio and video uh, to the website. It's a great place to be seen and heard and to get a lot of great information. Uh, about, it's about a million unique visitors every month. So it's definitely a place you want to be if you have something going on like uh, a podcast like this one. <laughs> so that is Positively Pittsburgh Live Magazine, pplmag.com. You are listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus and our website is Ludini rockandrollcircus.com. We're bringing you two interviews uh, every week and a music podcast every Saturday. So make sure that you check back off. And in fact, if you sign up for our mailing list, you don't have to check at all. You can get mailed right to you. Plus a lot of great bonus material that you don't hear on the official podcast. So some very cool stuff there. Now, as I was telling you guys when uh, we first came on that I have Sharon Knight uh, with us today, uh, San Francisco songstress. Sharon Knight is a Celtic folk singer in leather armbands. Uh, she plays octave mandolin, <laughs> as if it were an electric guitar, and sings uh, as though she means to summon a storm. Accompanied by longtime collaborator Winter, they craft a sound both ethereal and fierce, uh, combining gusty bravado with delicate beauty, adding a hearty dose of fantastical lyrics and an obvious love of storytelling in Celtic in Celtic inspired style they call neo folk romantique. All right, and welcome then Sharon Knight to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Hello. Hi. <laughs> hey, where are you calling Thanks from? I am right now calling from the Anna Maria Island in Florida. Ah, right. We you guys have a show down there this week or something? Yeah, we played last night. Oh, okay. How and often I, do you got? How often do you and Winter tour? Well, you know it increases every year. This year we're on tour about six months, and we're hoping to just keep it going. We're just going to keep right on booking gigs because we don't want to do anything else. Well, cool. Awesome. Yeah. But you do you do have another sort of uh, uh, business kind of going, and we're, I want to talk to talk to you about that a little bit l- later on. Uh, you're very okay. Sharon is a very interesting uh, person. She's got a lot going on um, that <laughs> I think you guys are going to really enjoy. Uh, so so um, let's take a little bit of a step back. Let's kind of go back and like get a little bit of your uh, your bio here. Uh, sure. How did you get started uh, and get interested in music in the first place? Well, I've always loved music. As, as long as I can remember, my dad loved music, and there was a lot of singing in our house. Um, when I decided I wanted to learn how to play music was when I discovered Celtic music. So I just I loved bands like Planksty and Steel Eye Span and the really haunting minor keys, and I just thought I, I must know how to play this. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, what came first, like your sort of interest in like the folklore and stuff like that, or your your interest in the music? They kind of happened around the same time, like right around when I was 18 years old, I became mm-hmm. really interested in, you know, Celtic music, but also the lore and the fairy tales and just mm-hmm. this idea that there are these other worlds that we can slip into. So they both kind of captivated me at the same time. Um, so what did you do? Did you just like immediately start writing songs? Did like how, how did you how did you move forward from that? Did you take lessons? Um, did, what did you do? Yeah, I was I was working at a health food store, and there was okay. a a gentleman there who was a, a Celtic musician who agreed to teach me a bunch of traditional songs. So that's really how I learned is uh, 
learning traditional songs first and then didn't start songwriting until a few years after that. Um, what was, uh, now you've been putting out records since like what, 97? Yeah, 1996. 1996. Okay. So, um, if you can remember, what was the first song you ever wrote? Oh boy. The very first (laughs) song I ever wrote. I, you know, someone on this tour reminded me of a cassette that I had put out with my, my mentor at the health food store that I had forgotten all about. (laughs) <laughs> I think of my first album as Incantation, and then this person conjured up this old cassette. So one of the first songs I wrote would have had to have been on that cassette. I can't even remember the the name of, of the songs. They weren't very good. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so wait a minute. So you start writing songs, and immediately you start putting out records. Like, well, it was a couple of years after. A couple of it years. was a couple of years after, yeah. Because most people are like, you know, they spend years sort of like crafting before they put themselves out there. So that shows some bravado um, on your <laughs> part. I, you know, no, 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 that, that, that's cool. Um, I mean, do you, do you see yourself as, do you feel like you are like maybe like a brave soul? Um, I guess some people think so. What I'm not sure think? I've ever really thought about it like that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Some people thought I was nuts to drive across the country by myself and, and do a music tour with whoever would let me play for them because I didn't even have winter with me the first year. And some people thought that was brave, and I just thought, I want to do this. <laughs> what is this? Like, how do you get – how do you kind of uh, create – um, a name for yourself and a following and get gigs in this scene. Like, what? Tell, tell us a little bit about the the Celtic folk scene because I I think a lot of our listeners do not really kind of uh, this is kind of a new uh, 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 area for them. Yeah, that that's a very good question. I think we're all trying to figure that out as we do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for starters, we are not. Um, and when I say we, I mean my husband Winter and I. We are not traditionally Celtic anymore, Mm -hmm. really, at all, so we don't even fit neatly into the Celtic genre, although we do uh, go after Celtic festivals and sometimes get them. But, yeah, we're really trying to – we're very much part of an alternative scene. Like, we've started to get gigs at steampunk events, and then there are mythic and fairy festivals, Uh which have been really – a godsend for us because very much of our music has this folklore and storytelling kind of fantasy world element to it. And um, if it weren't for that, there was a scene sort of happening that a lot of different people are creating, we'd be having a a hard time indeed. So there's definitely a certain amount of synchronicity that happens of uh, some sort of a wave ripples through the culture at large. And we just happen to be, fortunate enough that we've had this vision that is now kind of lining up with the aesthetic of what people in America seem to be getting more interested in. Are you Which is um, kind of a rambly yeah. answer. <laughs> no, 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 no. It makes total sense. Are, are, so you guys, you guys play like Renaissance fairs and stuff like that? You know, we haven't done that many Renaissance fairs. Um, that, you know, we're not really traditional enough for the Renaissance. We're not either, traditional so, enough for that, okay. Yeah, so we play, um, we definitely play some Celtic festivals, and um, we play some fairy festivals, we play some pagan festivals, um, and, you know, there's this whole movement of myth and magic. So, you know, we'll play at, at little New Age shops, for example, and, um, you know, New York has a fairy festival, Maryland has a fairy festival, um, Eugene, Oregon has a fairy festival. So there are these little, um, you know, and people are interested in, in shows like Vikings. So there's this this burgeoning interest in, in myth and magic. Um, so we're able to plug ourselves into these various different scenes across the country and... Uh, you know that's really where we we started. Why, I, why do you think why do you think people are uh, interested in this stuff? And I I totally agree with you that there is a definitely mo- like a something afoot. It's something in the air. Uh, you know, in the in the zeitgeist uh, yeah. uh, right now with with interest in these things, and not just in a, a fictional sense. People are 
you know, uh, really trying to explore uh, these these themes, you know, in a you know even even in a historical uh, sense, in a in a uh, spiritual sense. Why do you why do you think that that is? Just your opinion. Well, is, 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 it's fine. Your opinion, whatever. Okay, I I think that people are really looking for meaning in their lives, and I think that there is a sense that we're missing something. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, long before we were quote unquote civilized, we, we lived much more in connection with the world and we had more of a back and forth symbiotic relationship with nature and with our world. And I think in part of wanting to make ourselves more comfortable, which, which is great. You know, I love indoor plumbing and I love air conditioning but we've also <laughs> cut ourselves off as we've created this buffer between ourselves and nature. We've cut ourselves off from the, the soul and the spirit of nature. And so there's a sense that we've, we've thrown the baby out with the bathwater. And I think mm -hmm. um, reviving a lot of these more uh, nature traditions of which our songs very much come out of, I think that gives people a sense of connection with the world at large that they had lost. Okay. Good. Okay. I, 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 yeah, I totally, we're on the same page there for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, t tell me, so, so your latest record um, is Portals, right? Yes. Okay. Cause I want to talk, cause you have something called the green album as well. Oh yeah. And I want to yeah. kind of touch on that in a, in a minute here, but tell us a little bit about, we're going to play the song, uh, Porcelain Princess here in a minute, but tell us a little bit about Portals, the recording process, wh how you guys uh, did it, where did you, where you, where you recorded, you know, give us the sort of Reader's Digest version of that. All right, sure. So, um, Portals is uh, our current album. It's uh, is it thirteen songs or twelve? <laughs> you think, <laughs> think I would know that? It's I think it's twelve songs, and it's. Um, it was. It's based on. We had a lot of our friends, uh, guest musicians, featured on Portals because we wanted to convey a feeling of life on the road, where we're always mm. traveling to different places. And at this festival, you know, these other musician friends might be there, and they sit on our set, and so it has a different flavor. And then we go on to a new festival, and different musician friends are there, and they sit on in on our sets. And we wanted to Portals to create this feeling of this ever flowing different musical synergies that happen when you live on the road. And so we think of each song as being a different portal that is opened up in the minds of the listeners, depending on which uh, collection of musicians was available at that time. So it's got this traveling circus theme and it was recorded at El Mundo Bueno Studios in Oakland, California, of which we are part owners in. So that certainly helps. Okay. <laughs> and we crowdfunded the whole thing so that we were able to pay all of our musician friends because we're very strident about wanting to create a thriving artist's community where artists can live reasonably and get paid and, and eat while they make us art. Um, and we were able to make a music video of Porcelain Princess out of the crowdfunding campaign. And uh, I guess that's pretty much the, the spiel. Um, do you, okay, the album's called Portals, and you said like each song, you kind of feel, you know, it sort of has like a, this idea of a portal, opening a portal. Do you, so, so, so that brings up this question, because I've heard different artists say this, you know, they don't feel that they're technically writing the songs per se, but they're sort of channeling them or they are sort of, you know, that the ideas are sort of like floating in the ether and it's just to be open or to be able to latch onto them. Uh, can you talk about that? Your songwriting yeah. sort of feeling approach idea? I absolutely agree with that. I think that the songs already exist and that we can open to them and court our muses and if we're lucky the songs that are ours to reveal to the world will present themselves and it's it's kind of like chiseling away the pieces that aren't the song hmm. well speaking of uh, um, uh, portals and uh, chiseling, chiseling away the pieces we're going to chisel away a little porcelain here so you see how I <laughs> is that a little hokey alright uh, this is this is your track, Porcelain Princess. 
Uh, this is on Portals. I, this is track two. Uh, so, guys, check this out. Porcelain Princess, uh, Sharon Knight on the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. the old attic where nobody goes moth eaten curtains hide greasy windows day after day I call this my home in a box made of cedar and cast away home but when the blanket of twilight falls beckoned we are by the curtain bar you pull my strings and I hug to your wind and twine in a dance made in thrill I come alive in your arms A trench china cheeks A crimson and white I come alive at the warmth of your hand With every breath I take Heart of my heart can break I am your porcelain princess no more A flesh and blood girl She smells of peach blossoms And absinthe and yearning Honey white hair And breath of warm spring The lust in your eyes It's me burning What must it feel like To be so alive With a cold hot fire That smolders inside If you could but see How our dance quickens Me of the heart of a lion In winter time I come alive in your arms My chips dry the cheeks Grow crimson and warm I come alive I fall to your hand With every breath I take Part of my heart can break I am your porcelain Princess no more Okay, uh, Sharon, Porcelain Princess, because you guys you did a music video to it and everything. Tell us a little bit about that song. Well, uh, Porcelain Princess was written, um, it's basically a song about feeling invisible and wanting to live our lives more fully than we are, but feeling like we're just not able to do so, that we're looking at our lives from the other side of a window and not really being able to get in. So it's about a, uh, a marionette who's in love with her puppet master. And, uh, you know, she's made of porcelain. And the only time she really feels alive is every hour when they do their theatrical performance for their audience, when she's dancing with him and feels valuable to him. And, uh, um, if he would fall in love with her, she would transform, not unlike Pinocchio, and shed her porcelain skin and become a real flesh and blood girl. Um, but he doesn't he doesn't see this capacity in her and so she stays made of porcelain and uh well you'll have to watch the music video to find out. <laughs> to find out Does what she, happens. <laughs> yes. 
Um, so are you the porcelain princess? I mean, is the is the muse sort of uh, pulling your strings and you're saying, you know, you're trying to kind of bridge this gap? Is, is there something autobiographical element um, in the song? I, not specifically, but I certainly have felt that way at times. I think, mm-hmm. I think all of us feel that way sometimes. And when I wrote it, I was at the very beginning of seeing if I could pull off making a living as a musician and um, I had been invited to perform at this festival in Seattle and I was staying at the house of of a very close friend and musician of the producer of the festival and they were all sitting in on each other's sets and playing together and were really close-knit and I felt like I was sort of the new kid on the block and I definitely felt like I was looking in on this world and trying to become a part of it, but not feeling a part of it yet. So, so I suppose that that is in there coloring the the song. Hmm. Okay. Well, um, how, how much do you, um, because I'm leading up to your other, uh, business here. (laughs) Oh, okay. Um, How much, tell us, because, because your songs do have this sort of otherworldly, sort of like reaching into the, the the fantastical or the mythic. And tell us a little bit about your personal beliefs about that and how that rela- relates to, and if it relates to your uh, other uh, side here, the, the terror readings. Oh, right. I was wondering what other business you were going to mention. <laughs> oh, I have, um, I have, I have my, my natural sister, my, uh, she, she does this professionally. So, like, mm-hmm. when I saw that on your website, I became, like, very, very interested in it. So, cool. yeah, that's why. But, but go ahead. Yes, that caught my attention. All right. So, um, yeah, I mean, I definitely have been practicing what I preach, as it were, for a good 25 years or so. Um, you know, I – how to explain it? I do read tarot. Um, mm-hmm. That's something I've done off and on as a side job for 20 years or so, and I – I believe that we are all connected through consciousness in ways that are much more strange than we are taught to perceive. Mm-hmm. And so we can speak to each other on, on deeper levels of consciousness by using symbols. And that's basically what the tarot decks are, is a, a set of symbols that apply to the soul's journey of a human being. And so depending on which cards reveal themselves at the time, uh, represents what patterns are more strongly active in a person's life at the time. So, you know, I believe that our symbols speak to us through our dreams. Uh, they certainly speak to us through the arts and um, that we have deeper languages that we can use than just our spoken language. And that the tarot is one of those languages. Mm. Um Tell us about um, because we're because there's so much to get to and I don't want to miss anything. So I don't that. Thank you for sharing that with us. And sure. if you guys are interested, um, there is a uh, a link on um, on Sharon Knight's uh, website uh, for that. And I believe it is the tab that says workshops. Right? Yeah. If you go to Sharon Knight dot net and you click on workshops, you can get some more information on that. Um, yeah, tell definitely. me about. Tell me what is the Green Album. The Green Album is a project that several of uh, us musician friends who end up playing at the same festivals decided to pool our resources for. Um, you know, we all love being musicians, but we sometimes feel like may- maybe we're not contributing to making the world, you know, to healing the earth or whatnot as much as we mm-hmm. could be. We're just contributing with song to making people feel good. And that's that's an awesome thing that we thought, wouldn't it be nice if we could pool our resources then to also help an organization that is specifically dedicated to caring for our planet. So um, each musician wrote an original song that has never been released before and contributed it to the Green Album. They all have um, the theme of loving and celebrating the earth and wanting to protect the earth. And then we are donating 25% of the profits to the Rainforest Trust, which is an organization that actively um, 
raises that tries to preserve rainforests all over the world and is very collaborative and cooperative with local groups in the in the regions where they're working and we thought they were a great organization and we just wanted to lend our music to helping them. So that's what the Green Album is and the songs are beautiful if I may say so. <laughs> well, I'm sure if it's any, if it's, uh, any indication of your other works or any indication, I'm sure it's absolutely fantastic. I have not had a chance to hear the Green Album as of yet. Um, so, And you guys who are listening out there in Radioland, uh, SharonKnight.net and then you can find the green album through through that as well. So if you go to the hyphen green hyphen album hyphen is hyphen here, the green album is here. Uh, you can do it. Plus, you posted it on your Facebook. That's how I found it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, oh, by the way, guys, that is Sharon Knight with a K, uh, a K N I G H T. Just just in case you're uh, out there trying to Google along as we go. Um, so, so what does the next what does the next like uh, six to twelve months uh, look like for uh, you and Winter? What do you guys What do you guys have coming up? Well, we are on tour a lot. Um, so many places that I can't even remember. So that's also on my website, SharonKnight.net slash tour. Um, we're going to be on the road until mid-September. Then we go home and, we, you know, host our own home festival in Northern California, which is called Hexenfest. Hexenfest.net, everybody. <laughs> so we go home and play that um, both as a, our duet and um, as our full band, Pandemonium. And we have a few of our touring musician friends coming out for that too, S.J. Tucker and Wendy Rule. And then immediately after that, we go back out on the road in October, and we're just going to keep on booking gigs. We're going to keep on booking until we get sick of it. <laughs> until it's time to do the next record. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, okay. What is the um, – so do you guys typically, when you tour, is it typically just you and Winter, or do you guys have uh, other musicians play with you, or do you just use the other musicians when you're at home? We t- – 96% of the time, it's, we're just playing as a duet. Okay. Um, and we will often flesh out our bands with, you know, with our revolving musician friends who are at – you know, this festival or that festival will ask them to sit in. Um, we ha- have a different project as well called Pandemonium that, uh, that is its own set of people, and we don't really tour with that that much because it's just so darn expensive to have a six-person band out on the road. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that, <laughs> I, I'm hearing that from everybody um, that, yep. I, that I talk to. Um uh, but you guys also offer stuff like ho- uh, house concerts, right? Yeah, house concerts. Are this, great. This, is, this is something I've been trying to kick a lot of bands in the butt to do. You know, um, you'd be there's so many that are just like, you know, they're trying to find other ways to kind of like maximize what they're doing. And I'm like, what about house concerts? They're like, oh, I never thought about that. So tell us, they're great. Tell, yeah, tell us about uh, how, what the house concert uh, stuff is all about. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I love house concerts. You know, we play m- mainly festivals and house concerts, and house concerts are great because, A, the people are there to listen to the music. B, um, typically the artist gets all the money. Um, you know, there, you don't have a a venue that wants to take 50% or whatnot. Right. Because the person hosting the house concert is much more interested in providing an experience for their friends and family and community. And, you know, they they usually have day jobs. They don't necessarily need to make the money. They just want to support the artists. Yeah. Um, They're enthusiastic about what you're doing. Yeah. And then C, if I were to pick my top three things, um, C would be they often already have a built-in community because they want to turn their friends and family on to this new music that they love. So especially when you're trying to build something up in new areas, which, you know, what musician isn't always trying to build more of a following? And it, it takes takes a while, you know. So, yeah. so asking people to host house concerts, you're basically getting um, them to bring all their friends, and you're not only reliant on your own ability to draw people in that area. So they're just fantastic. I mean, we make some of our best, money at house concerts 
Okay. Well, I have a lot of musicians. Um, well, I have a lot of musician friends. I'm a musician, and you know, um, and we have a lot of musicians that listen <laughs> to this. So you just have given uh, some great advice. So guys, play this part back <laughs> again and again and again until you get it. And if you go to um, uh, SharonKnight.net, there is it on the tour tab. There is a uh, where it pops up a host a house concert, and you guys can get more information about that. I wanted you to talk about that. Uh, we're gonna have to come on. You guys are done very well with crowdfunding. And at some point, yeah. maybe we, yeah. you, I, I've talked to, I've got a couple people now. I've got three different artists that are crowdfunding, like really doing well with it. And you guys are one of them. And we might do like a round table at some point. Um, but this sure. is too much to get into now because we're kind of running short on time. But, uh, yeah. you know, I think you guys could probably uh, offer some great information. But um, uh, before we wrap up, is there anything uh, you'd like to the kids at home to know uh, before, we, uh, <laughs> before we finish the, the, the podcast? Um, no, I don't think so. I think you were very thorough and asked great <laughs> questions. <laughs> well, guys, that is SharonKnight.net, um, and that is uh, Knight, K-N-I-G-H-T, all right? And you definitely want to go there, and you can get everything that you need uh, there, including the information on the house concerts. Uh, the uh, the creative counseling, tarot sessions, and all that wonderful stuff. Uh, you can also support their pat their Patreon um, uh, efforts there as well. Oh um, yes, please. <laughs> yes, no, yeah, no, no, definitely. <laughs> hey, um, Sharon, th- can you you got a minute you, to to take a to do like maybe a little bonus question? Sure, no problem. Okay, all right, all right. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, Sharon. Hey, guys, you are listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. We're going to wrap up today's uh, podcast. You were listening, you're listening to my interview with Sharon Knight. Uh, that is K-N-I-G-H-T. SharonKnight.net is where you want to go to get all that, uh, all the goodies there, including uh, uh, you, there's some videos. There's all kind of cool stuff there. You definitely want to check it out. Uh, thanks again to my sponsor, Positively, Pittsburgh Live magazine pplmag.com this is the ludini rock and roll circus ludini rock and roll circus.com and if you can stand one more url i'd like you to check out support uh this is our uh uh way that you can get involved in the, some of the marketing efforts that we are getting uh are getting ready to launch here very soon for uh to help people to help get the word out about bands like Sharon Knight and uh, some of these amazing artists uh, that uh, you've uh, had the pleasure of hearing on the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. That is supportindyrock.com. Ludini Rock and Roll Circus.com is where you can go to catch up on everything Ludini and meet all your Ludini needs. Ludini Rock and Roll Circus.com. Guys, thank you so much for listening, and we will see you on the next podcast.